Hi, everyone. The Buffalo Sabres have just been defeated in overtime in Game 6. Joe Juno with the game winner. The Caps came back time and time again tonight, and they go home. They get to look forward to the Stanley Cup Finals now, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, boy, you can't feel bad about this game if you're looking for Buffalo to show up tonight and work hard. That they did. Washington worked just as hard. It was tough to see anyone lose and anyone win this game, but Washington kept on clawing back. They get the win tonight. They move on. And we got an hour to talk to you on the hotline. Join us, won't you? Hi everyone, welcome to the Labatt Hockey Hotline. The Caps have won the series over the Sabres in overtime and uh, by far and away, this was the most entertaining game of the series. Yeah, it really was, Brian, and uh, boy, that's the, the most empty feeling you're ever going to have all season long. You fight as a team and then suddenly it's just over so quickly and uh, everything goes away, just drains right out of your gut and it's, a, it's an awful feeling. But uh, it was a great game. This was just a terrific game tonight. I hope the fans enjoyed it. Hope they enjoyed the season. And uh, unfortunately, there's always a winner and a loser here. And uh, I'll tell you tonight, Washington showed a lot of guile, and a lot of guts to keep on clawing back. Remember, they had to do it in the other team's building, and they did it. They found a way to win this game. As is so often the case, uh, generally it'll be a mistake, and more often than not an overtime that will be uh, the deciding factor. And Shannon kind of lost the puck uh, at the blue line, tried to recover. Bellows went right around him. Hashik makes the initial save, but uh, Juno pounces on the rebound. Yeah, you know, you really take a look at this Washington team. Uh, when you think about it, Juno was probably their best player throughout the whole series and very deserving of getting that goal and had opportunities to score many more, except he had to beat Dominic Hasek, which they couldn't do with great consistency. But uh, it was a good goal. Uh, they crashed the net. There was nothing cheap about it, and uh, he rammed it home. And uh, that's it, folks. I mean, uh, <laughs> got something to think about all summer and get ready for next season. You know, one of the keys for the Sabres uh, throughout the course of the playoffs, if someone would score, they would come back inside 30 seconds. Uh, time and time again, that seemed to be uh, their key against the Flyers and against the Habs. They finally, finally break through, get a goal on Kolzik, and uh, wouldn't you know it, uh, they come back just 22 seconds later. And just a wonderful play to Nordy over to Tekin. And, and uh, that really, I think, was a big tone setter for the Caps. Uh, the Sabres won a big role. They answered quickly. Yes, they certainly did, and uh, you're right about Buffalo, and that's a good point you bring up about them, that they always found a way to uh, come back like that, but right after teams consistently scored quickly against them all season long, and it followed them right through into the playoffs, didn't it? All right, uh, the final score, 3-2 in overtime. Joe Juno gets the game winner. The Caps are off to the Stanley Cup Finals, a wonderful run for the Sabres. And a wonderful run for the Labatt Hockey Hotline. You better believe it. All right. Nice we, long season, just the way I like it. We've got <laughs> interviews coming up from Marine Midland Arena. The highlights and your phone calls. Stick around. A wildly entertaining game ends in disappointment for the Sabres. Uh, we want to get to the highlights before we get down here from the coaches. And we're going to show you the goals. And we'll get things started with Buffalo's first marker, of the game. It came in the second period. Uh, both goaltenders were spectacular up to this point of the game. Uh, but uh, Buffalo would break through, and this was really the first time in, in the game, Mike, when they scored. Buffalo looked tired, uh, finally, at this point, but uh, it, it was a, a really nice uh, effort by uh, Ward. Uh, actually, we're looking at the saves here from the first period. Uh, uh, we'll talk about the, the goalies in the early stages. They were Chris came in, of course, and got that goal tonight, a very important goal, but here's a great play right here. You know, he's going against a pretty tough customer in Simon, too, and he knows he's going to get chopped up and still puts his head down and he goes to the net. It takes a lot of courage to make that move, especially as Simon's right on top of you, and there's Cruz standing right in front of the net. So that's one of the reasons he was put in there, and uh, this line played very, very well tonight. Look at this, right off the guy's toe. I mean, not <laughs> off the inside of the skate or the other, right off the toe. All right, here we go, and uh, you'll see the wraparound opportunity here uh, by Audette, and Kolzik comes up with the save. That one kind of got off his, the heel of his stick. And uh, we'll pick it up, and here's the breakout. Uh, you'll see the, the Sabres, and Ward's going to buy a little time here, 
and then kind of a little back pass and peck away. Snow time, snapshots in. Well, that was a key right there. A quick shot didn't give the goaltender time to set up, but give Ward an awful lot of credit. He's the guy that makes this goal happen. Here's a breakout, nifty little pass. Now watch what he does here. He'll back this defense right up, puts him in a defensive posture, and he's in close enough now that any shot will do. No, it's almost like Pekka shot a curve at him or something. That thing just broke to the left. Now, just 22 seconds later, Miller really outworked Sanderson, uh, and that was the key to this play. But then Tenorti makes an even better play, spotting Tekanen. Well, I, I thought this was the play of the game right here. Tenorti pulls up in this shot, takes something off it, and you can see right there he just slides it into Tekanen. Tekanen smelled that play out all the way. Great play by Tenorti to make that pass. So it was a 1-1 game, and uh, some of the unbelievable saves uh, from Ashik this time bellows uh, and great anticipation. Yeah, one of the reasons he's so good is because he can replace. Watch how he slides right across, goes with the puck. The timing's perfect. All right. The guy looks up, the net's there. He looks down, sets the puck up, looks up, and the goalie's there. 1-1 going to the third period of play. and. Uh, Things got interesting. Uh, Paul Cruz, boy, Lindy Ruff, uh, didn't he push all the right buttons throughout the course of the playoffs? A Bugner shot here, getting spun around. It goes off Cruz's skate and in. I was going to say, boy, he's pushed all the right buttons all season long as far as taking players out, putting them into the lineup. And once again, Cruz was the right call, but he's out working the chief here, Barubi, which will eventually this shot will come through. But watch the front here. This is the nice thing about having tough individuals that will go to the front of the net. You score a lot of goals that way. And he's caught up with another guy that's just as strong, just as tough, excuse me, but he, win he wins the battle. And it goes right off the skate and in. All right, on the power play, Hasek, kind of a weak shoot around in. What a pass by Nikolishin. And Bondra buries it. And Mike, he shows his athletic ability with his hands here and earlier in the athletic play to try to tip one in. But how about the pass from Nikolishin, who has been the unsung hero, that was a really, of this series and has come on strong. He's turning into a real star of the National Hockey League. Here's the shoot around. Watch the puck come whipping around the boards. And you'll see Bondra set up. There's the pass. Talk about hand-eye coordination. You know what? And beautiful soft hands. Actually, as you watch it, uh, we go to overtime now. And uh, here, Shannon kind of uh, mishandles the puck, and the Caps have them in transition. And then Bellows goes around Shannon. The Groshek doesn't get back to get Juno, and he tucks it in. Groshek had him completely tied up. He is right there. That was another one-on-one -on -one battle that Buffalo lost, and uh, that was a one-on-one -on -one battle that really uh, uh, put them out of it. But, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one battle is the name of the game. And uh, I felt bad for Shannon because he got a little caught a little flat footed in that situation. But the problem was once he, Juno made a great play because it would have been offside, Brian. He held on to the right. puck, let things get set up then for, for the counter attack. Then uh, once Bellows got the puck, uh, Shannon was caught a little flat footed. He didn't have his speed to really go with Bellows. Bellows knew that. It was a beautiful read. And he went on the outside and made, that, made the man go with him. And then everybody went to the net. So Juno made a couple great plays. And then he had to shake Grosik mm -hmm. off going to the net. And he shook him off. And he found a way to stick it in the net. Hey, Chris Ann, if you could uh, go back uh, to the. Uh uh, the tying goal in the third period, the Peter Bonner goal, if you can get that one racked up. Uh, Tenorti, we talk about uh, screens uh, and getting hash and it's your best opportunity. Tenorti actually, and as a first, I just spotted this, Tenorti actually screened Hashik on the pass by Nikolishin, because normally Hashik can get from post to post. And it, I think if we watch this again, you'll see uh, on the pass by Nikolishin that Tenorti actually was kind of coming out into the slot area. Hashik never saw the pass. Only fitting. Juno gets the game winner. He was the best player for the Caps. Here, let's take a look at this tying goal. Question about that. He was their best player. All right, this, this is the tying goal. When we get to the, the replay, I think you'll be able to see Tenorti come out from the goal line and actually set a screen on Hashik for the pass. I mean, he, he doesn't react. Yeah. It's the next replay, I believe, will really, uh, well, okay. But not only that, he probably uh, interfered enough with Shannon to probably throw him off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was a great job. Here, Catch watch Tenorti right here. come out. But this guy, Tenorti, I mean, he's a great defenseman. He just got better and better right there. Just kind of a little tug on the elbow, and the puck went through. All right, let's get down to Marie Midland Arena. The coaches are about to address the media. First, Lindy Ruff. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow. You know, we had our opportunities in overtime, and you now we make a mistake in the neutral zone, but 
they have to be. I mean, I'm extremely proud of the way they played. I mean, it was uh, obviously not to be. <clears throat> Well, Shannon, uh, you know, a fan on his pass in the neutral zone and then uh, ended up getting beat on the rush by Bellows. And uh, I don't think our other defenseman picked up Juno going to the going to the net and he just had a free crack at the rebound. Uh, he was fabulous. Uh, it was an unbelievable year for him. Uh, we, we got all we asked out of him. He uh, he made some great. It, it was a it was one heck of a goaltending battle tonight. Uh, you know the the goal. You can't fault him on any goal there tonight. Uh, their winning goal was uh, a blind pass that went over a defenseman's stick and right onto Bondra's stick, and uh, he, he didn't have a chance on. Well, uh, if I had to summarize it, game two really, uh, really stung us. It seemed like it took, it took a couple of games to recover from that. Um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty even series, really. You know, game one, uh, we dominated. Game two was even. Game three was half and half. Uh, game four was really good. Game five was awful. And the game tonight, we gave it everything we had. So, you know, the... Uh, uh, obviously, the better team won, I guess. Lindsay, did both the, did the teams seem nervous to you tonight? Did the play seem unusually sloppy for a game with this much on the line? Or maybe is that why it was sloppy? I, I didn't particularly think it was that sloppy, really. Uh, you know, there's a lot of chances. Uh, you know, our our power play was, uh, you know, as good as it good as it could be, really. The, the puck didn't go in the net. We generated all kinds of shots. Uh, you know. If, if that would have been sloppy, then the whole game would have been sloppy. But there, there was a lot of good opportunities both ways. You impressed with Washington uh, coming back at the first goal, they came right back. Obviously, Bonner's goal at the end for the big goal. They just kept coming. Well, we, we never once expected them to quit. That's for sure. You know, uh, you, you don't get this far by quitting. So uh, they, they came hard. Uh, but I didn't. I haven't seen the call yet on. Uh, on Sanderson. You know, I, I think so, but uh, I'm not going to whine about any of that. Uh. Well, the the line that. Uh, Kind of dominated us, uh, you know. Even their five six minutes was, uh, you know, Baruby and Hunter. They they turned the momentum in, in in our building a couple times, and you know there was a couple of intimidating guys on the line, and uh, we were having problems finding somebody to play against them. So uh, you know there was a it, it was a tough decision to take Shatan out, but it was a uh, you know it gave us a line that could neutralize at least not give them any momentum. It wasn't going to be intimidated, and they end up scoring a goal for us. So. Well, uh, you know, you can you can talk a lot about uh, you know Tikkanen's been a playoff performer for a long time. We, we knew that uh, he scored again a big goal again tonight. He scores big goals in big games. Uh, uh, you know, he scored a huge goal against the uh, Florida team when I was there in, in Madison Square Garden in an overtime situation that uh, you know eliminated us and. Uh, He's a. I think he was a key acquisition for them. Can you look at the series and say that the veterans were the difference in the series, or something else? <sighs> I find it tough to say the veterans were the difference. Uh, I think they, for the most part, stayed a little more composed at times when when we went stretches that uh, we got a little bit rattled. But that happened in the previous series too. Uh, 
I said before, I'm, I'm not going to trade our younger guys in for, for some of their veterans. Uh, they've obviously had a, a huge performance in goals throughout the playoffs by Kolzik. Let's give the guys some credit. Guys, we've got one more for Lindy. Then we'll wrap up. If not, we'll wrap up now. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Obviously a very dejected Lindy Ruff. Yeah, it's painful to watch, yeah. It's got a, that, that's a dagger. And uh, certainly it's uh, the air out of the balloon. 3-2, the final score in overtime. Joe Juno, uh, the official time, 6-24. Uh, right now they're calling this one unassisted, but um, certainly sure. Bellows <laughs> did some We'll look at it a few play. times before the night is over. All right, let's go to the uh, Chamberlain garage door opener save of the game. And uh, there were many great ones in this one. Uh, Kolzig uh, at one end of the rink uh, made a great save on a deflection by uh, Holzinger. And uh, here's a look at it. The shot right there, Woolley, and it's redirected. And it took a couple of angles to realize he actually got a piece of this. Yeah, I, uh, to me, this wasn't the save of the game until you really study this and you realize this puck was going in. And what happens is that he does redirect this puck, watch the stick, He'll come out at the last moment, and he'll redirect this and just get enough of it, Brian, where it wings a little bit about a foot wide of the uh, the post, but uh, looked like a sure goal, didn't it? Yeah, Holzinger he, had a good game tonight, by the way. Oh, Played boy. Very strong. He was dancing out there. You can, tell, you, you can tell when he's in for a big game, the first shot. You just watch. If he's flying, he's skating. And if he's not, it's going to be a long night. All right, let's go to Nick in Niagara Falls. Nick, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you guys doing? All right, thanks for calling. Hey, uh, I got something to say. Uh, first, I think Paul Cruz uh, and Brian Holzinger played a great game tonight. Holzinger really showed his speed. And uh, second, I'm really disappointed from this game that uh, first that the Sabres lost, and then second that uh, Lindy Ruff had confidence in putting Mike Wilson out near the end of the game. I mean, Wilson's just been playing brutal in this series, and I can't understand why he had him out there. But, you know, Nick, I, I'm going to tell you, and... and um when I sum up this series, all right, and I look, uh, say, for the downside for the Sabres and uh, maybe where they tailed off, I've got to tell you, it wasn't only Mike Wilson. It was the whole defense. That defense was so tired, they could hardly pick their feet up in the last three games. Late in the season, but the last, I would say, 10, 15 games, I couldn't believe the difference in this defense, how tight they were playing as a unit. And they stayed that way. And st remember how well they played everywhere against Philadelphia? It, they were just playing out of their heads. And then all of a sudden, they got tired. The last, I, I'm going to say three games, it might have been two games, where they could hardly pick their feet up. I mean, I, it didn't matter who he put out there. They could hardly move. Actually, Woolley was the only guy that had any jump in his, in his skating at all. Other than that, it was just like just getting through every shift and just find a way to get through it without getting embarrassed. And it was a tough two or three games for this Buffalo defense. It, it talk about improvement over game five. The team really it, Enormous. It wasn't even, wasn't even the same. Totally different hockey club tonight. They showed up tonight. They worked very hard. They lost an honest game. They didn't lose because they played like bums. They played well enough to win that hockey game. They didn't. That's all. Listen. That's the way it goes. Maybe they got the little better, played a little better in Washington. They should have won, but let's go back to the Washington game. There shouldn't even been a game tonight, the way Washington played two games ago. So those things have a way of evening out. You know, we've talked about Lindy Ruff and uh, what a wonderful job he has done all year long. Certainly, uh, a lot of credit has to go to Ron Wilson in this series. Uh, he had his team. He had a nice game plan mapped out, and uh, he tried to play the head games, but well, uh, he did a wonderful job. There's three things. I just told you about the defense really tailed off. That hurt Buffalo. There's certain individuals. I mean, Grosick didn't even come close to being the player he was early in the season. He tailed off too. Verada didn't even. He was lacking a little bit of intensity. I mean, no, Pekka wasn't the player he was during the regular season. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why the team tailed off a bit. But uh, certainly, the fact that Wilson had this other hockey club, they found a way to cut the speed off from Buffalo. Going into this series, he said Buffalo skate the hind legs off of Washington because of their speed. Well, they didn't do that. And they didn't do it because Washington found a way to cut a lot of that speed off. And so they were well prepared. All right. This was a wonderful series. In six game, uh, games, the Caps get the job done. Sabres uh, made it interesting. And I just, you know, I, I would have loved to have had the opportunity to watch. Game seven, a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, and you got a lot. You would have really had to like Buffalo's chances in a, in a one-game showdown with Hash. Here, here's what I just pray. Please, just don't 
they lost in a row tonight, but hey, we had a great season. What the heck, we tried. All right, certainly, you had a great season and everything, but don't accept this. First thing you want to do is come in in the morning. How can we make this a better hockey club right now? We have to move this guy, this guy, and this guy. These are the guys we want to start wheeling and dealing a little bit because you just can't. Well, it was a good and it was a good season, but that's it. I mean, you lost. That's the bottom line. You didn't win. You lost, and you have to find a way to improve. And this club's going in the right direction. In terms of that, uh, to follow that up with John Regas at the helm now, does the philosophy of, of this team change? We know uh, in recent years, uh, John Muckler was trying to put the pieces of this puzzle together. It was slash, slash, slash financially. And it's an amazing job what he did to get the numbers down. But what, what do you feel the mindset of the organization is now with the change in ownership? Well, I, I, you know, I can't get inside his head. I think if I own the team, I want to make this a profitable business. If I have to go out and uh, spend $15 million to uh, win a Stanley Cup but lose $15 million, no thank you. It doesn't seem like good business to me. What you want to do is do the best you can with the resources you have. And Muckler did a very good job of that. But he's handed the torch over now to Regeer. And now Darcy, this will be his turn. And he's going to have to make some moves. Some guys are going to have to move on. Other guys are going to have to come in. He's been very, very patient uh, so far in uh, his uh, tenure here as general manager. So now it's, uh, he's going to have to move now on it. Let's head down to Marie Midland Arena. Ron Wilson is addressing the media. Well, f I mean, from my perspective, I personally thought the puck was under Dominic, and uh, I was waiting for the whistle to blow. Now I've had the benefit of looking at the replay. The puck had squirted free. I mean, Brian Bell has made a great play getting outside the defenseman and going to the front of the net and taking a big hit. And it was just laying there, and uh, uh, Joey was, he went to the net hard. And we, we talked about that, and then sporadically we did it, or we go to the net. Uh, when I'd say that to the team, unfortunately, we had some guys take it upon themselves to run into the goalie, and we took some bad penalties over the series. But uh, Joey went to the net, found the rebound, and just jammed it home. I said to the guys, uh, first of all, no matter what happens, as far as I'm concerned, we've won the game um, because everybody uh, is saying we'll choke again, the three to one. And if it goes to a seventh game, we've played well enough tonight to take something out of it. But what the heck, we're here. We're going into overtime. This is what we live for. This is what you dream about as uh, kids. And, it, and then I mentioned what we talked about this morning. Our theme was uh, this is like... Uh, Apollo 11 landing on the moon. Um, Caps have never been to the finals, so the finals is like landing on the moon. And uh, all these people were supporting us around, uh, whether it's our parents or coaches along the way. We had a, a huge support system, and everybody was pulling for us. And not only did we get one chance, Apollo 11 had one, and if they crashed, they were dead. We had two chances to land safely on the moon. And uh, going in a third period, so I said, we have to have someone in the room who's uh, Neil Armstrong, and Joey Juno said, I'll be Neil Armstrong. I'm the only guy in here who probably knows who Neil Armstrong was. Now he's aeronautical engineering, literally says, I'm a rocket scientist. That's what he said this morning when we talked about it. So I really, uh, you don't anticipate things like that, that the guy who says he'll score the goal goes out and scores, but that's what Joey did. What's that? I don't know. You know, I thought about that this afternoon. What am I talking about Apollo 11 for when, I mean, even Dale Hunter would have been six or seven years old, and he probably doesn't even remember. But, uh, you know, I think that's the greatest accomplishment in uh, this century, landing a man safely on the moon and bringing him back. So we're looking for something that uh, we've never done before, and that's get into the finals. And uh, we've been talking about uh, who do we... Who are you going to, I asked each individual before the game, who are you dedicating this game to? And uh, whether it's your parents, your um, brother or sister, your kids, your wife, and we went around the whole team and I had the guys uh, dedicate the game to someone special in their lives so that they would realize that uh, a lot of people out there thinking about them. No, I don't. No, I don't. I mean, emotionally... Detroit, because uh, my dad and my uncle coach there, but it doesn't, they're both great hockey teams and we're going to have our hands full. Um, it's probably everybody out there thinks we'll go down four straight. 
in the last couple of finals, last three or four finals, it's been four and out for the uh, losing team, and I'm sure not too many people are going to give us uh, much of a chance, but uh, we've gotten there, and now we have a chance. Well, it didn't, you know, it didn't really come to that until the last two games. And uh, Dominic won the game in, in Washington the other night, and Ole had a huge hand in winning tonight's game, especially in the first period. He made some huge saves, and um, while up front we were bending a little bit, uh, Ole made it possible that we didn't break. And, uh, you know, they scored a lucky goal on him, uh, that second goal. I mean, they worked hard, but the puck squibbled through his legs. It was kind of lucky, and we didn't get down. We just kept working, and, uh, you know, Peter Bonder came up with a huge goal again, uh, you know, late in the game. And from that point on, I thought we pretty much controlled things. We, you look, I'm looking at the shot clock, and, geez, it's 2-1 to one halfway through the game, and I thought, this is kind of, we're kind of comfortable playing these kind of games where we're struggling a little bit. Ole's into it. He's seeing a lot of pucks, so he's comfortable. I think Dominic Koshik would say the same thing. If he's getting a lot of action, he gets into the game. And, and Ole is definitely of that variety as a goaltender, too. More action, the more he's into it, and he gets sharp. If he's not seeing the puck a lot, uh, I suppose it's tough to be down there all by yourself and not let your mind wander. I thought you talked a lot. <laughs> you, know, you know what I was going to do? Put one of those space helmets on him. <laughs> oh, like, where is he? On the moon? And he's all over Mars, and we're leaving tomorrow yeah, I mean, with this guy. And, you know, there are nights <laughs> I just sit takes, back and right? let you go until you run out of oxygen. But I think he's Man, got you beat. I think so. <laughs> How about the Caps real quick? What lies ahead for them in the finals? Uh, do you think they'll be able to sustain the, the momentum they've got going No, on? I like Detroit. Both, both those teams, I think, could handle Washington. All right, we're going to take a break, come back. we got a lot more on the Labatt Hockey Hotline. Please stick around. All right, back on the Labatt Hockey Hotline. We know that the Caps have beaten the Sabres. We want to know what's going on elsewhere in the world of sports. Mike DeGeorge's suit is spotless tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mike He's been working on it, baby. <laughs> Mike DeGeorge. I'm out there, Jerry. <laughs> take it away, Michael. <laughs> So I think I got something right here. There you go. You got that? Okay, I got it. Thanks, guys. Bison's back home for the first time in eight days. And the Bison's having to compete against Game 6 tonight right down the street at the arena. But a paid crowd of over 6,000 turning out. You see Buffalo and Norfolk and didn't have to wait long to see a lot of offense by Buffalo. Bottom of the section, second, Richie Sexton. Grand slam, six runs second for the Herd. Sexton had five ribbies on the night. 8-1 final. Steve Carse getting the win for Buffalo tonight. Elsewhere in the International League, Syracuse over Durham, 4-2. Dave Steeb getting his third win. And in the Eastern League tonight, Binghamton beating Harrisburg, 5-1. American League, Baltimore and Boston. As we go to the scoreboard, it is Boston, big over Baltimore, 9-1. The Yankees without Derek Jeter, he's been put on the 15-day DL. They beat Tampa Bay, 6-1. Elsewhere, it is Toronto over Detroit, 9-6. And the White Sox clubbing Kansas City, 7-1. A couple of other scores in the American League. Oakland tripping up Texas tonight, 6-1. And Cleveland nipping Minnesota, 3-2. One of the scores still going, fourth innings. Seattle behind a Ken Griffey, two-run shot, his 22nd. They're out in front of Anaheim, 2-1. Good matchup out in San Diego as the Padres taking on the Houston Astros this afternoon. And Billy Spears going to get caught, going to third. He's a dead man. He's out. Bottom of the first, Greg Vaughn puts the pods in flight right there, reaching out and clubbing this two-run shot for a 2-0 San Diego lead. Bottom of the seventh, and it's a good day for the San Diego pitcher, Alan Ashby here, laying down the perfect squeeze bunt. That making it 4 nothing San Diego, and Ash Ashby becoming the first Padre in 10 years to pitch three straight complete games, and San Diego winning it 5-1. to one. It is St. Louis and the Dodgers, and the Dodgers win it 3-2, and one other game in the National League, Arizona and Colorado, and the Rocks winning that one 5-2. to two. Brian and Michael? All right, Mike, uh, how about a season-ending perspective? That's a tough way to go out, but uh, all in all, it was a fun year. Well, I think the series against Washington will uh, best be remembered uh, for uh, a couple of things. I, th I think, first of all, bad officiating, and then I, I think, second of all, the uh, the great goaltending stage between Nikolzig and Hasek. Uh, 
Eventually, this series probably comes down to the fact that uh, Buffalo didn't play all that well defensively throughout the series. It cost him the series. It cost him the overtime winner tonight. But uh, you're going to have to look back, and I know Lindy Ruff said it in the postgame press conference, that game two where they seemingly had it in control, and, and maybe, just maybe, the officials took it away from them. They never seemed to recover after that. All right, Michael, thank you very much. And it is not an excuse. Uh, the Sabres uh, really got down after game two, but I want to. we'll talk about this when we come back. I couldn't believe Frazier refereed last night. Well, I want to talk to you about that and see what you think. Anyway, back in a moment on the Labatt Hockey Alley. Okay, real quick, just to follow up, and not to beat a dead horse here. Game two, we all know. It, it well, you're beating it. Oh, well, I want your opinion on you're this. You're a dead horse here. Well, it's on, over with. I, I, you let me finish. It's the last show of the year. I'm so bored of hearing this about this second I'm, game. I'm, I'm, we, I, listen to me. All I want is your opinion. All right. Give me a Frazier had a horrible game. Right. This is not the reason the Sabres lost the series. I'm not yep. going there. He had a horrible se se uh, game yep. in game two. The league apologized for all the mistakes. If somebody, you know, slashes somebody or takes a cheap elbow, they get suspended. I mean, I don't, their officials well, are. What's the question? Officials are graded for their performance. This guy worked the game last night. To me, I mean, there should have been some And penalty. the question and is? He should not have refereed. Do you agree or do you not? I disagree. What are they going to do? The guy's been a referee for 15 years, so many years in the National Hockey League. He made a mistake, all right? It was a bad mistake. No, he made several mistakes. All right, so he made a mistake. I, what are they going to hang him in effigy and never let him referee again for, for the rest of his career? Fire him? No. Never let him? No, it wouldn't be a referee in the National Hockey League. Do you have a bad night? I'm talking the yes. You get to come back here and do this show every night. But I'm talking the next couple of weeks. No, that's, the, that's what. Okay. You can't destroy right. a guy his whole career over making I'm a mistake. About destroying his career. Well, that's what it would do. This, oh, are you kidding? What would that do? Can you imagine what that would do? I didn't to, think this would elicit this kind of <laughs> passion from you. I just I. One thing. That, look at the nice play of the game. All right. Sir, <clears throat> and uh, it's Mark Tenorti. Wait here, look at it. It's over here. <laughs> Mark Tenorti spots Teak in it. Uh, last, last show, huh? Last show, buddy. All right, there's the play right there. He could have shot the puck. He didn't. Instead, he ended up taking a half shot, half pass. Th th this is just an outstanding play by a defenseman who did nothing but get better through this whole series. The longer this series went on, the better he got. He was terrific. And uh, he's a great leader on this hockey club. Here, right here. Watch him slide this puck right across. Defenseman has his back to the play, except the guy that tipped it in didn't. You can see the puck coming all the way. 3 2 in overtime. Caps move on to the Stanley Cup Finals. We're going to take a break on the Labatt Hockey Island. We've got more coming up from the rink, your phone calls, and much more. And coming up in just a little bit, uh, we're going to have a nice highlight package wrapping up the season uh, put together by Chris Ann Bellis, Randy Janney, Mark Tucci, Dave Tasca, and Jerry Rott. Uh, our, I guess it's a tradition here on the show. Jerry nice, Fraser uh, could help out. He's not doing anything. Let's go to He's Chris out of work. in Buffalo. Hello, Chris. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, uh, Chris. It's going, Chris. How you doing? Uh, a little stressful tonight. You know, hats off to Kozik. I think he was the best goaltender in the series. Not Dominic, unfortunately. But... Uh, one of two things that really bothered me, I, I thought that uh, when you're killing the power play, or killing the penalty, I'm sorry, and uh, seeing Holzinger skate in, and I mean, just get hauled down, I was shocked that Kolarski just tucked a donut in his mouth and didn't blow the whistle or anything. But the thing that upset me most in the series is watching Shatan. This guy did not show up. He did not back check. He, and I was surprised. He's a not factor the whole series. I'm surprised he didn't put uh, Cruz in even earlier. You know, and I'll hang up and listen to what you guys have to say. All right, Chris, thank you very much for the call. Certainly, uh, that that will be a big hot topic. We both, I believe, I, I, I thought Why it was you? a penalty. I'm not going to even try to get in your head. Holzinger, I thought, was hauled down in, uh, in a shorthanded situation. Gosh, he didn't make the call. And he, no, he was hauled down. Oh, you agree with me? Yeah, but I, what is this? Like, uh, is, is that why they lost? No, I didn't say that. I mean, is that Kerry Fraser going back to the second second game? Is that why they lost? Do you listen? Well, yeah, but you you're making listen? you're making this thing about Kerry Fraser, Kerry Fraser. If that was a problem after That's the not, second game, then that. they're supposed no, to get no, it no, out of their no. head and continue no, on. No, no, no. I, I agree with that. Listen to me. I agree with that. It is not the reason they lost the series. All I am saying is. He did not do good work. He should not have refereed another game. It has nothing to do with the outcome of the series. We're taking a break. <laughs> Man.
Hey, let's head to the phones. Let's go to Dave in Orlando. Hi, Dave. Hi. A couple things. First of all, I'm going to uh, get it on with Mike a little bit here. While the Sabres didn't lose tonight's game strictly because of the refereeing, Koharski called a horrible game. The two penalties were blatant. And my question is, when is the NHL going to get into the 20th century and have two referees like the NBA instead of having two stupid linemen? Let's get two referees, have one linesman, and, and, and let's start – getting to a major league level. This league is not there. Second of all, I will say that Ron Wilson did a masterful coaching job, totally outcoached Lindy Ruff, made Lindy Ruff look like a peewee coach, and Lindy Ruff ought to also learn from Ron Wilson by going to the same haberdasher as Ron Wilson. He's a very dapper dresser. All right, Dave. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, Wilson did a great job. There's no question about it. He did a terrific job, and uh, this team uh, found a way, and I think the most impressive part of his coaching was that Washington found a way to cut the speed away from Buffalo. Took a lot of it away from them. Very few guys really looked like they were dominating out there with speed. And I think that was one of the uh, uh, critical parts of this series. Goaltending was pretty even. Certainly, uh, uh, Kolzik played a bit better than Dominic Hasek, and that might have been the difference in the series. But uh, still, Hasek played good enough for this team to win the series. And uh, it didn't happen. So uh, certainly, Wilson did a good job preparing his team. And the guy is right. I thought Kaharski called a good game. Uh, missing the, the Holzinger thing was the only questionable thing. But uh, we got about 20 seconds. About 20 seconds. Do you think a two official system uh, can work? Yeah, I think it can. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen because they'll have to go to the players' association, or I should say the referees' association. And why would they vote something like that in? Does that mean one guy's out of work? Or are they going to still go with three guys and it's just two? There's a lot of things to be discussed before that's uh, finalized. All right, we're taking a break and coming right back. 3 2. Caps in OT. They win the series of four games to two. All right, we went ahead back to Marine Midland Arena. Rick Jenneret, Jim Lorenz join us, and we want to get their perspective on Game 6. Gentlemen. Well, I, I think uh, maybe an overall perspective as opposed to just Game 6 and the fact, that, at least as far as I'm concerned, that after the disappointment wears off, uh, and it will overnight, it might take a couple of days for some of the players and some of the fans, but I think then that they can probably uh, take some solace in the fact that they uh, had the best record in the NHL from the 1st of January on, and they also got as far in the playoffs to where 22 other teams did not get to. Absolutely. Uh, it was quite a run for Buffalo uh, beginning in January. January and unfortunately uh, for the Sabres coming to an end tonight but uh, I thought uh, the way they played tonight just uh, an outstanding effort after a very poor effort in Washington in game five uh, Dominic Hasek of course we all know won that game but I I think the way they, they played tonight and the way they battled uh, just goes a long way you know I was thinking too uh, after Wayne Gretzky had won all those Stanley Cups uh, with the Edmonton Oilers uh, I heard him on a tape once and, and he was talking uh, the, the year before they won the first cup, they went to the finals against the New York Islanders mm -hmm. and they ended up losing. And he said, you know, he said, what, what happened, what we, we learned by losing how to win. And I think, uh, I think that's a pretty strong statement and a pretty true statement and a statement uh, that I think we're going to see uh, have a very positive effect on this team next year because I'm sure that uh, this team will be kept together. Yeah, and there's, there's some irony here too. Uh, the fact that uh, overtime that served the Buffalo Sabres so well um, through the early rounds in the playoffs was what did them in in the in the in the final round or their final round. Isn't that the truth? Uh, of course, in this series alone, uh, three overtime games, three overtime games won by the Washington Capitals. And uh, I know we made a comment uh, tonight uh, that boy, are these teams ever going for it? And both teams did. Uh, they they held nothing back. Uh, they uh, they just went at each other uh, at every opportunity, and Buffalo just came up short. Jim, let's go over that uh, that winning goal tonight. How did you see it? How did you? Read that uh, overtime goal. Well, I thought uh, Bellows uh, just made an outstanding play as he uh, raced into the zone and, and managed to maneuver to the front of the net. Uh, Buffalo uh, didn't really do a, a good job on him. Uh, Dominic Hashi, of course, sprawling down, uh, stopped him, what, a couple of times, and no one picked up Juno. Uh, and Joey Juno, uh, he's an excellent goal scorer, knows where to go, and just uh, slammed the puck into the open side. But it was a play that developed in the neutral zone. I know Lindy Ruff was saying that uh, uh, Daryl Shannon uh, fanned uh, on a pass, and that's really what started everything. 
Gentlemen, it's been a long, entertaining year. Enjoy the summer. The fall will be here before you know it. <laughs> You're right. That's, that's the one thing about going deep into the playoffs. It, it cuts down on the time off. Well, right. I can't wait till next year. I'll tell you that right now. This, this was a roller coaster ride, but the roller coaster did not end up at the bottom. It, it, it's still on its way up. All right, Rick and Jim, thank you so much. We do have to uh, take a quick time out here on the Labatt Hockey Outline, and we'll come right back at you. Please stay with us. Hey, there's a major uh, announcement coming between the Mets and Dodgers at midnight. Mike DeGeorge will have that for you. And uh, we want to get to the phones here quickly. Scott and DePew. Hi, Scott. How you doing? Good, sir. I got sir. a question for you. Go. Oh. Okay, Peter Bondra. We did a good job containing him in the first game or two until that uh, controversial goal. But we contained Lindros and Leclerc, another 50-goal scorer. Koi Vu, possible 40, and Recky. What do you think our problem was with Bondra, and who do you think we're going to let go at the end of the season? All right, Scott, Bondra was that one play he made where he jumped and tipped it between his legs. You see that? You just jumped through the roof. Incredible athletic play. Absolutely. He jumped up in a little spinorama type of thing, and he caught it right between his legs on the tip in, and I think it caught up on the far pipe. So um, uh, it was a sensational play. You know, uh, I showed you just how great he is. You can't contain a guy like that forever. I can tell you right now, he's too good. Try to control him, but... He's going to get his points. Tough to put you on the spot in terms of who is coming back, that kind of thing. Uh, Ray, of course, an unrestricted free agent. Listen, there's no sacred cows in any team. Everybody's available to be traded, and I think they should look at it that way and do what they have to do to make the team better. That's the bottom line, what you have to do to make it better. All right, we're going to take a break, come back, and bid you farewell, but we've got like a 15-minute highlight package that covers the entire season, so stick around for that. Back in just a bit. Well, it is the end of the season on the Labatt Hockey Hotline. I know uh, uh, for Mike, uh, I'd like to thank the sponsors. Uh, Labatt, Nice, the Chamberlain Garage Door Openers, uh, M. Weil. That's right. And uh, Marine Midland Bank and Arby's, the beef. Beef of the year. <laughs> What's the beef of the year? You got one? I haven't got one yet. I'll stay tuned for next year. I'll have one by then. I have plenty of beefs. Hey, it has been a My treat. My pleasure. It really has been. Let's Brian. do it again. Yep. Sounds like a plan. I look forward to it. And we want to thank you, the callers, because without you, not much of a show, is yeah, it? I just feel really fortunate to be here and be able to talk to them all season long and enjoyed every minute of it. And thanks for all the nice things you said and also all the. Uh, Things you didn't enjoy about this show, we take everything here, whether it's good or bad, and we just appreciate you being with us. Uh, you are the show, and so are our sponsors. We thank you all. All right. We would also like to thank everybody here at the Empire Sports Network, in particular, Chris Ann Bellis, our producer, who does just a magnificent job. We have had a wonderful season. We hope you have had fun joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next fall. Time now for a season to remember. Good night, everyone. <laughs>